we're going to go over updating Mac OS that seem to be spurred by a lot of people having issues when the critical Mac OS update came out. Cause I guess, you know, this is the first time I think in Big Sur where security was kind of mandating, you guys need to update uh, your computers. So a lot of people realized that they didn't have a solid workflow down for Big Sur yet. Um, so that's kind of what it caused this. And we're going to go over um, some, some workflows basically, right? So, right, the 11.6 critical update came out, people were upset. Um, so we're gonna go over updating Mac OS by sending mass action commands, the software update payload um, in a policy, packaging and deploying the installer, running the software update uh, command via a script, as well as some honorable mentions. So first things first here, we're gonna go over updating Mac OS by sending a Mac or a mass action remote command. So for uh, Silicon and M1, you need a bootstrap token or else the end user is gonna be prompted. And if you're trying to deploy these updates silently, uh, that's gonna cause issues, right? Oh, especially if the users are unaware. So to do this, uh, you create an advanced computer search and you set up the criteria to target what exact operating systems or what computers, right? It doesn't matter, you can use anything in the criteria. And then once you have those computers targeted, uh, you view the search results, uh, you select action, and you can actually send a command to update all the Macs. Um, it works great, it works flawlessly, the end user's prompted, it, or not prompted, but is given an alert, and their computers upgrade, right? This, this is, not been an issue. So this is one uh, method uh, we recommend. I would say this is my second favorite out of what we're going to discuss today. Um, and again, so this is downloading Mac OS via Apple software update servers. Uh, next is running software update via a policy, right? So you create a policy, you configure your software update payload, um, but and then you got to configure the restart options if the install uh, or if that, you know, an update is required. Um, it's not foolproof, right? There's a lot of issues that have occurred with this. I have seen it work intermittently. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does work. Sometimes there's no logs. It's just kind of a mess. I don't recommend going down this avenue and it doesn't even work on Apple Silicon. So if you got M1s in your environment, um, this isn't an option. I linked in the bottom uh, the remote commands URL for Jams documentation uh, detailing. It's how it's not working for Apple Silicon and I even posted a little thing there from the dashboard. This is my favorite. And um, I'll tell you why, because you obtain the package yourself, right? You upload it, even though it's time consuming, you upload it to your server and it's downloaded directly from your Jam server to the end user's machine, stage where you want it to be, um, and you, you deploy it and push it out that way. I say it's my favorite because we don't have to rely on Apple software update servers to deploy this. If anyone was paying attention during the 11.6 update, Apple servers were going down. They're getting bogged down and it was causing huge issues, right? You can totally circumvent that scenario by deploying the, the installer package yourself. Um, the one caveat is, for Intel and M1, you're gonna to have to have separate policies and separate scripts within each policy because uh, M1s require uh, an admin, password, and username to be passed along with uh, the, the script or the command you push. Um, but with that being a policy, you can set a deferral amount for end user notifications and it just works flawlessly every, every time. I've never had an issue with this. Uh, so this is my number one recommendation for anyone having issues uh, pushing Apple updates, especially with this most recent one. Um, uh, one thing I want to mention, Hugo, uh, just because we're talking about the 11.6 update. What did I um, say? I don't know, but no, no, just I wanted to point out with the 11.6 update, something about this, because if you had been updating this way and you were in a situation like me, where I think that update came out Monday night, and then everyone was like, we need to be updated yesterday. It's like, well, that's not possible. Can we shoot for tomorrow? Um, 
when we started looking into it, and I hadn't ever seen this before, but Mac OS did not bake in 11.6 to their base installer. So you could not update this method. And it wasn't released until Friday. So they released the update on Monday. And it wasn't until Friday they actually, they, they actually added 11.6 to the installer. So that's when we were kind of scrambling to find other ways to update, because this has been our main method of updating. I don't know if yeah. that's going to happen much in the future, but. <laughs> I would like to add that uh, Mr. Macintosh is a good resource uh, for these as well. If you can't get them yourselves for some reason or you have trouble, um, we can, we'll be sharing some resources after this keynote as well. Um, another method we've used, and Chris has some data baked in from this. So uh, we, the, the software update command uh, using flags that pertain to your environment. Uh, we went with AIR for all updates, install and restart, uh, capital R, I should say. But with this, we've had some very interesting results. Uh, as you can see on the screen, Sometimes the inventory update gets missed, sometimes it doesn't, which would, you know, it, if it doesn't report in for a day that's it's been upgraded, then uh, depending on how you build out your, your uh, triggers, this might try to install again. Um, but this is another pretty good option to use. Um, and it's used by uh, these guys right here and these honorable mentions, the Kinder Mac OS update script, the Apple software update script, and the Jam passive update prompt. Um, we'll be including these in our resources that we send out, but these guys use the software update uh, command in their scripts, uh, as well as a lot of interactivity and deferrals for the end users. So if you wanna go that route, these guys have basically done it all for you. All you have to do is build in your parameters and, and you're done. You can walk away and watch it work its magic. Uh, with that being said, in the future, they are making this a lot easier. Um, they'll be allowing enforced software updates via MDM, um, and they'll be including um, extra stuff like the install later MDM command, um, allowing the end user interactivity while you're deploying this via a Jamf command. So um, this is gonna be super useful. And I really look forward to it because this is basically what we've wanted for years, right? Uh, I didn't start using Jamf until Sierra, I believe, maybe El Capitan. I think El Cap. Yeah. And ever since then, we're like, why, why doesn't Jamf do this? Well, hey, uh, Apple's finally allowing companies to do this. Uh, yeah. That so, said, I'm sorry. Oh, I wanted to reach. I wanted to uh, say something about this, Hugo, because uh, there has been a little bit chatter in the chat about. Uh, specifically, you know, the the remote command is like the the way that both Apple and Jamf recommend that we all update. But if you've ever done that, first of all, you need a bootstrap token, which is kind of a big thing to do because oftentimes you'll need to interact with your users in order to get that bootstrap token. Uh, second of all, though, and this is probably more important, there's no way for the user to interact with this at all. So what does the user workflow look like? Well, you send the remote command, you can send it through a mass command or to a single computer. Um, they wait probably like 10 or 15 minutes, like after that gets sent, and then they get a little pop-up that says something's updating, and then probably another 10 or 15 minutes, and then their computer randomly restarts. <laughs> so it is, it's not the, the kindest way to update your OS. So this new way of doing it in Monterey, hopefully, based on what Apple has said, will be a lot better. There's going to be a prompt they can interact with. Um, they, can, they can defer it for a period of time, all those things. So hopefully in Monterey, that'll actually be as advertised. Um, <laughs> the biggest thing we were running into when this came out is there's, you know, with, with the, the software update command that... Uh, Hugo showed before that doesn't work with the um, with M1 computers, but the the base installer does if you prompt them for a password. Um, but when 11.6 came out, we didn't have the ability to do that, so we had to go to, through some of these other ways. 
which weren't as nice. Um, anyway, I'm rambling now. <laughs>